Okay, I'm Sergeant Todd Fogelis of the Men in Black, and I just want to introduce this little segment for you. We're going to talk about uh, the inner Nazi. Okay, uh, I'm Admiral Comac of Starfleet Command. Uh, you might have seen me in the original Star Trek series with Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock, Dr. McCoy. And uh, we've been given a uh, Code 1 emergency from planet Earth. Apparently there's a pandemic of a very minor cold virus that has got people going crazy. And we've been asked to send our entire fleet to Earth because we need to decontaminate it. All right, my name is Mrs. Smith, and um, I am somebody who likes to wear this hat. Mrs. Smith has been involved with planet Earth her whole life. She's 83 years old, and when, um, when she gets involved with humans, generally speaking, she thinks they're all carrying germs. And she's so convinced that germs are going to kill her, she's decided to become her own personal person. In other words, she is personal to herself. This is an old Rumpelstiltskin teaching, and we'll get Rumpel to give you a bit of a description. Okay, Rumpelstiltskin is not here, so I'm going to give you the description. A personal person is someone who is uh, invested in you. That is, they consider you to be someone in a personal relationship with them. So much so that they feel like they can rule your life if they think that you are um, insane and they are going to do it by calling the police and having you hauled off to the hospital. They believe that their opinion is so much better than yours that in fact they should be your guardian. Oh, and that also means you have to sacrifice your freedom as an individual because this other person who you consider a fascist or a Nazi has decided that they're going to be a fascist or Nazi in your life. And what are you going to do about it? Run away, run away. Oh, my name is Pinder. I'm a reptilian from planet Draconis. Um, we're basically involved in a big story. And the story is how many people, when they're under pressure, turn into fascist Nazis. In other words, the Gestapo, which was the secret police of Adolf Hitler. You think people would have learned after World War II, you know, watch out for Nazi tendencies? Mm -mm. It's more like, let's go and become Adolf Hitler. Yeah, Sieg Heil. Oh, one more thing. In search of some uh, relief from uh, Nazis in your midst, who do you turn to? I don't know. I've been considering um, pulling out uh, an old copy of George Orwell's 1984 novel about a totalitarian dystopian Earth. Uh, Orwell wrote it, I think, because of World War II. Or maybe you'd like to go and get a reissued copy of some other book where the Nazis won World War II, you know, one of these alternative Earth histories, you know. Because in my opinion, the Nazis did win World War II, and that's why the world is the way it is right now. It is run as a totalitarian dictatorship known as the New World Order, although they seem to have sub-governments that people seem to belong to. The New World Order is indeed ruling planet Earth, and it rules it through corporations. Corporations are known as multinationals, and um, the media is one of these corporations, and they have multinational reach, so that they can infect people with their lies everywhere. Oh, one more thing. It also means that your um, personal people in your world, people that have personal relationships with you, are under 
duress. In other words, they have to keep up and act. In other words, they have to pretend that they've been listening to what the mainstream news has been telling them and say, you know, even though I know that they lie to my face constantly day after day, I still have to pretend that I'm taking precautions based upon the lies that they keep telling me. Why? Well, because, um, This is the biggest issue. The biggest issue is even when you know you're being lied to, you're forced to change your behavior. And this is a sign of totalitarianism. It is undue influence on human beings by enormous corporations whose sole goal is profits, profits, and profits. And what else? Well, their owners, the, you know, enormously wealthy, also want to keep the other people under control. They want to pay them peanuts. They want to execute them, you know, as in the Georgia Stones of philosophy. We're going to cull the earth population. What else do they want? They want um, all of us poor people to serve them as slaves. This is like ancient Rome. More and more, I've come to the conclusion that nothing really changes on this planet from generation to generation. Humans do not evolve. They are kept in a prison camp. And I am Commandant Clink of Hogan Heroes. And my General Bookharter says, if I don't get to the root of what is going on, I'm going to be sent to the Eastern Front in Minsk, Russia, where I'm going to be forced to count snowflakes. Oh, one more thing. Colonel Hogan, an American colonel in my prison camp, has been suspected of sabotage, and General Bokharter wants me to haul Colonel Hogan and his gang out of my prison camp and send them back to America, where they can do more damage. Why? Because Hogan is actually working for Nazi Germany. Why is that? Because I'm Colonel Klink and I'm pretty much stupid and I just come up with these crazy ideas. All right, it's Christopher Isherwood here again. I'm the novelist, and I'm here to sort of tell you what's going on. Now, if you don't remember Hogan's Heroes, it was a, a TV show comedy that was set in a Nazi prison camp uh, during World War II, and the actual TV show was created in the late 1960s. It was a, a comedy, and it was all about how the Americans and the British who were in the prison camp outwitted their German prison guards. I have to stop and pause for a minute because it's time for me to take a drink from my sippy cup. My sippy cup. I don't want to waste too much time drinking water. I just want to remind you that even though you're one of about six people who watches my channel here on YouTube or Instagram television, you are important to me. And so uh, I am not going to pull my punches. I'm going to give you my full delivery of the story, even though there's only about six of you that are going to watch it out of the entire human population. How do I know? I watch the, 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 you know, it tells me how many people watch if I come back and look at my account. Oh, and one thing, uh, if you happen to be a German person somewhere and your name is uh, Siegfried, maybe you would like to come and visit me because I live in a little place in northern Canada where it snows most of the year and the rest of the year. Um, we drink beer in the backyard and we listen to German polka music. Oh, one more thing. If you go to Germany and you go to Munich and you go to the Hofbrauhaus, 
Uh, this is a very old drinking hall, and during uh, the Nazi period, they painted swastikas on the ceiling and walls of the Hofbrauhaus. Well, my friend visited the Hofbrauhaus in about 1984, and he said you could still see the swastikas. They were kind of painted over, but you could still see them. In other words, um, we still have historical buildings that lived through Nazi Germany. It's hard to find humans who have lived that long. They're pretty much all dropping dead of old age. Nevertheless, if you go to Germany and you go to Berlin, you can see a lot of tourist attractions based upon Nazi Germany. In other words, oh, there's even pieces of the Berlin Wall that were built after the fall of Germany in World War II. These little blips of human history still exist here and there to just show you that the stories that I tell you still have got physical evidence, although somebody that was really bright from Hollywood could have recreated it all and, you know, put it up there to give you a really good Truman show. Oh, one more thing. Make sure that you don't get too deeply involved with me, 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 because that one is always taking notes. Who is me, me, me? Someone who works for me. Me, me, me. My stenographer who writes down everything I say and does research on you. Okay, I'm the beer guy and I just came back from the Hofbro house and uh, believe it or not, even though I drank 12 enormous liter and a half glass jugs of beer, <sighs> It must have been near beer, because I'm not drunk at all, but I sure have got to go pee. Oh, one more thing. Would you like me to tell you the story about... Oh, hell, it's going to have to be in the next segment. Please subscribe and uh, share this out to your friends, because it's a very unusual piece. Okay, this is the thunder from down under, and the thunder from down under, uh, Australia, was pretty much, uh, we run out of toilet paper. And this particular gag has uh, gone all the way across the Pacific Ocean to North America. How did that happen? Why is it that if there's like a cold virus going around, that people stock up on so much toilet paper they don't leave any for anyone else? Known as hoarding, this is a horrible, abysmal behavior because it means other people have got to poop and use things like cats to clean their bum. Why a cat? Well, a cat is a self-cleaning organism, so after you've cleaned your bum with cat fur, uh, you just send the cat over there and it will go and lick its paws and, uh, and clean itself and eat all of your feces. What does it mean? It means we have got lots of germs being spread around by cat scratch fever. Okay, one more thing. The uh, thunder down under used to be about the enormous fires that were going on. You know, enormous fires that were going on. Well, we don't want to exclude Australia from world news, so we got to keep on coming up with something new. Something new to add to our conspiracy theories. I have one more hat. And this is Joe Fisherman. And Joe Fisherman says, uh, you know, after the cats uh, get through with eating the fish, they leave the fish bones in a metal garbage can in the back alley. You might have seen this scene in Looney Tunes with Sylvester the cat and his cat friends. They're starving, but they're still going through all the garbage cans because they're looking for one little piece of meat to keep them going one more day. Is that the next thing that the media is going to portray? Um, food shortages? I told you it here first. The insanity continues. And until we decide to pull the licenses of all the television stations, this shit is going to continue. <laughs>